What is going on guys? We are back with another video today and we are doing another rebuild this time of the Las Vegas Raiders. You're probably thinking this is a little weird. He's already kind of doing that and that, it is true. All right, but I kind of want to get this team done and rebuild it. For one, they are on the lower side. They're not the best team in the world and they play in a really tough division. And two, it'd be a little weird for me to rebuild this team like four seasons after our like Raiders franchise actually is you know through it'd be a little weird at least if we do now we can look back at this rather than do this and compare and yeah, I don't like that I'd rather look back and of course a 78 overall out the gate which you know this team does have some talent obviously the quarter thank you Thank you very much. The big issue besides the game crashing is the fact that Derek Carr is kind of a, of a hard to tell situation player where in real life he seems decent. He actually had a pretty damn good year last year, but in Madden at 30 with only star 81 overall, I don't know how long he'll last. As far as the receivers, John Brown is a new guy that they brought in. Once again, don't know how long he'll last. And I have Brian Edwards all the way at number two, which we actually moved him up quite a bit in our franchise, he's played really well there because he is a high potential player for them. And more importantly, he's kind of the bigger body build that they don't have. Say that a bunch of times in a row <laughs> as fast as he can. Ruggs fits in that slot role a bit better anyways. So, I don't know. I feel like even though Hunter Renfro had a decent year for the Raiders, I feel like he fits the slot role more than anything. And Ruggs fits way better in that spot. So, I don't know. I really don't know how to place this. If Edwards busts then uh, it's going to be a bit of a decision from us with rugs. Maybe uh, maybe sold a little bit. O-line we don't talk about because it's just, you know, you have Richie Incognito, and that's it. Like, you know, Colton Miller's, well, Colton Miller's decent, but you know what I mean, for the high, high overalls. Uh, Leatherwood, in real life, has a chance in Madden. I don't see it happening. Obviously, Josh Jacobs dropped a star, which is a little harsh, but still, we can obviously use him. He could go back up very quickly anyways. Waller's a god uh, Merrick, the safety. Carl Joseph was added. I want him as my number two. Cross the field, maybe even at sub linebacker. And then Abram as the starter, healthy and hopefully happy. Pass rush. Technically, Ngakwe is in a starter for us, but he is because we have Clellan Farrell also as a rush DT. So I think all three are going to have about the equal amount of starting time this way. As far as corners go, Casey Hayward, not a bad addition. Trayvon Mullen, not a bad season. And then Arnett, I honestly will be on. I'll be honest with you, I don't know anything about him. Did he get injured? I feel something tells me he got injured year one in real life. I don't know, but he started development trade here. And then linebacker Kwiatkowski is okay. Littleton's okay. And then Divine Diablo, who's 23, is a bit of a reach from us here, but hopefully he can develop. I mean, decent coverage ratings, right, for, for a linebacker, quote-unquote. Decent block shedding and all that. So, I mean, usable, but yeah, there's a decent bit we have to fix. Obviously, Gerald McCoy here. Honestly, surprised he's even still playing at this rate. And then Jonathan Hagen. So, a lot of positions to upgrade, but some positions could surprise us. Like I said, with Edwards, uh, with Carr, you never know what you're going to get. We might actually get a positive surprise. <laughs> not, not a negative one. Speaking of surprise, it'd be a pleasant surprise if you subscribe to the channel. For, for a second there, it was like... Wait a minute, how, how is he going with this? Is he going to be talking about it'd be surprising if you subscribe? That's not really a good motivator to stick around, but obviously we do a ton of franchise stuff. If you actually are a Raiders fan or you want to see Raiders franchise, kind of why you're you know watching this Raiders rebuild, we are technically doing a quote-unquote live rebuild where we uh, play every game, obviously, and stream some on twitch.tv slash care most likely going forward as we start 0-1. Does not surprise us. This is how I live. So, so far, I, I don't... Nah, I'm not going to spoil it. I'm not going to spoil it. Uh, let's look at our breakout. I was going to spoil the franchise. Kind of stupid to do that. Divine Diablo, please. He's a god. We all know he's a god in franchise, but let's see if he can actually be a god in sim. Oh, come on, Diablo, please. The play calling. There we go. Clellan Farrell. Is it Clellan or Cleland? Pharrell? Nah, dude, it's Cleland Farrell. Uh, gets the superstar. Ruggs also had a breakout. Checked it, though, and he uh, he did not get it. So I'm, I don't want to click it. And then, oh, well, what do you know? He got it. So we left the negotiations a little late. I don't know who we actually have to pay, though. Richie Incognito, I think we can keep him. But at 38 years old, it's all up to him if he wants to continue playing. Casey Hayward probably fit more for a safety after this season because those 
ratings even uh, are going to drop hard, which obviously looks really decent here, but if he goes down like 86 speed or something and or his man in zone drops, you know, what can you really do? John Brown, similar situation, really solid player, but the age is there. And then Carl Joseph, I think, is a one-year trial player in real life as well. So we'll see. Uh, a lot of players here are one-year trials. Alec Ingold, I'm going to give him a three-year deal. You know, run game's important around here, and he's a big part of that. Rasul Douglas, kind of a hybrid type. I don't think we really need a safety, and his level at corner isn't really something we necessarily need. Punter, I think we can do better. Kicker, it comes down to how well he plays. Uh, and, I mean, that's really it, right? We have a bunch of backups we'll look into, but overall, uh, no big name that's young and needs to be re-signed, technically. Well, here we go, headed to the playoffs, and it's an interesting season. It's not... Great. It's not technically bad. Our offense was pretty decent. Our numbers on defense definitely should have been better, but they weren't. It was a fair season. To tie the Chargers in the division at 7-10 and 10 is a pretty good win, right? As far as our stats and awards go, I do not know. Derek Carr, not bad in yards. Derek Carr, not bad in touchdowns. Pretty good year. Pretty good year. Completion percentage a little lower than we would have liked, though. Jacobs, 1605, 5.3 yards per carry with 8 touchdowns. You gotta assume that's good enough. Rugs, 1,068 yards with six touchdowns. I'm gonna be honest with you. I am shocked that he did not have more than this. It was like week nine or ten, and he was on par to potentially break the NFL record. I think he had 808 yards. I don't know if he had got injured. What's the story? Um, I think we have practice injuries on. I turned off the regular injuries. Uh, if you want to see regular injuries and harsh injuries, we have uh, have seen a lot not really necessarily for us, but a lot in the league in our Raiders franchise. Once again, keep pushing that, but maybe check it out. Brian Edwards was iffy. John Brown was decent. Waller was not as good as we'd expect, but yeah, we we definitely tailored towards a run-heavy scheme more, which you know makes a lot of sense. And I mean, it actually kind of worked out. I think if the defense played a little bit better, we probably would have made the playoffs, even if it was like the sixth seed or whatever. It still would have been good enough. Cleland and Farrell. Uh, seven and a half, seven and a half for Max. How many snaps did he play? Yeah, I mean, Yannick played a lot of snaps. He just didn't play good. He just didn't play well. Three and a half sacks on 900 attempts. Uh, Max Crosby played the most, which, I mean, I suppose and they're all kind of similarly built. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, he just didn't play well. I, we, we gave him his fair shot. 900 snaps played is, is a lot of snaps. Hunter Renfro on the return. That's really all he was useful for for us this year. Eighth. Overall for offensive yardage, looking at the awards, uh, yeah, Jacobs at number seven and Carr at number ten. Not bad, not bad actually for year one. Uh, we haven't really gotten our hands into this thing. That's what she said. Uh, rookie of the year goes to uh, not Trayvon Merrick, but our highest rookie, Derek Carr, best quarterback, number seven only. Number four for Jacobs, all the way at four. Maybe he won't go up in dev. I thought he would. I don't know why I would look at O line. And yeah, as expected, no no wins in the award ca category, but we had a couple of decent season players. You know, obviously, uh, Carr was decent. Same with Jacobs. Ruggs was decent as well. And then we also did have, uh, you know, the sack totals we've seen worse. Crosby and Cleland, it would probably be a down year or less than expected from them to combine for 15, but pressures obviously matter as well, which I don't know if you only look at sacks if you're EA here or if it really is just like we don't know how well he, they pressured and we just go off of sacks and of course Chiefs versus Buccaneers super original and the Buccaneers win shocking super original Super Bowl love that now we have our negotiations Richie Incognito I have no idea once again if he's gonna stick around in real life but he's still here for us O-line is rough around here I'm willing to pay him, like, a one-year 11.5, and he's glad to stick around. I'm glad he stuck around as well. Uh, John Brown dropped in dev. We see a lot of bad things happening around here to the players that we had. And what was Daniel Carlson's season, actually? Once again, I, you know, good kickers are hard, somewhat hard to find. Not a bad year, right? Like, I mean, if you look at the math here, it looks like he probably should get up to, like, a 95% after this season. I'll give him whatever he's asking for. How many years... Probably wants just a one year. One year we'll give him. A, I feel like that's actually kind of high, though. No? Not interested in signing. Best of luck to you, buddy. I mean, that seems a little high for a guy that was good, but not great. You obviously can't let Javen White go. 
And can you really let Nathan Peterman go, especially when you're losing Mariota? I'm not paying Mariota no 33-year, 20-mil deal. Like, not a chance. And Casey Hayward does ask to play for a new team. We offered him a one-year 8.5. He declined, which isn't bad for his age, but it wasn't enough, and he is gone. Ooh, Max Crosby goes up in dev. Maybe not super deserved, but we'll obviously take it. So 50 mil to work with, a whole offensive line to replace, could use a wide receiver. Devontae Adams, I have heard rumors, could go to Vegas. I'm going to have to look up and see how realistic those rumors are, but that would be a massive wide receiver to gain here. Absolutely would be. So I might have to look and do some homework and see if there is a chance I don't. I would say the pa the chance of the Packers signing, uh, re-signing Devontae, for one, it, a lot does come out to green, you know, to Rogers. I would say is probably around a 60, 65 percent chance at this point, which is good, not great. Uh, and then honestly, I would assume that if uh, Devontae can't go to to the Chargers, he would just go to some team with a lot of money and obviously a uh, you know a cool location. And I believe Derek Carr would be a great location, obviously because I believe they did play together in college, right? So Devontae Adams' new contract is likely going to be something around 25 mil per. And of course, that's the exact amount we're giving him, which is a lot of money. But for a guy with his talent, probably worth it. The problem is he's 29. Stop. Oh my God. I, I thought I've, I thought, oh, I thought it was over for me. I'm not doing that again. Hopefully it's just Devontae and not all the players because I would like to see some ratings. Okay, this is great. I want to do a rebuild today, not uh, have a seizure and die. But, you know, rebuild, seizure, and die. Sometimes, they, you know, they are the same thing. Holy, what the hell? It's getting worse. It's literally getting worse. Like, the game is shredding its... I'm done, dude. That's... No, 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 no. Look! It's legit getting worse. And there goes crash number two, three now. So we got some names. Devontae Adams reunites with Derek Carr. And as a Packers fan in real life, I'm I'm just happy. He's happy. I'm just happy, man. Quan Alexander, not bad, actually. A five-year, $5.13 million deal, which is not bad at all. Uh, Connor Williams, a little more costly, a ten or two-year 10.5. This is a backup. That's a starting kicker. My boy Tucker McCann, I love him. Uh, backup, really just a linebacker, but, you know, they say left end, and then CJ Moore, another backup. I'm glad this wide receiver decided to show up. An 8.0, obviously 8.0 doesn't guarantee anything, but overall, you know, it, it usually means something good. Not really a need anymore, though, obviously, which, I mean, for 25 mil per year, yay, we, we've solved a wide receiver not even issue, but yay. I mean, we did lose John Brown. I think John Brown's price would have been around seven or eight mil per year. Is Devontae Adams three times as good as John Brown? Yes, obviously, without a doubt. But still, I don't want to pay that much. But we did, so here we are. Well, I'm in a bit of a predicament here as <laughs> I have, I don't even know, maybe, what is that, 30 plus prospects and 181 scouting points to use on them. Nice. I'm going to assume the center's good. I'm going to assume that center's good. I'm going to assume that center's okay. I'm going to assume that center's good. This center, I'm just going to assume, is good. I think you just have to assume that the guard... Why would the hell would I want a 24 overall guard? You just have to assume the guards are just a risk, and so are the tackles, so... I'm just going to scout positions that we need that I don't guarantee to be good. DT's a big need. This guy's very, very solid. Is he the best, though? I don't know. Those those potentials don't really look super great to me. I think, personally, with the amount of DTs we have, some that range in the second round, I really wish I had these guys up here, but I don't. Uh, I think, realistically, we should just trade down to, like, middle of the... Uh, middle... Well, maybe even the late first, and then just take whatever's there. You've got to be kidding me. I didn't even realize it. I skipped to my pick. Well, I can't even show you guys because God's interfering once again. But uh, the Eagles took the player right before us. Buffalo. That is not a bad trade, Buffalo. I will keep you in my heart and keep you in my mind. The Falcons. That's not bad either. The Falcons, Bills, and I believe there was another team, the Patriots, 
offering some stuff. I really want this year's stuff, though, so we can start getting a go on. I don't know what that means, but Buffalo, that's not bad. I might take that. I think we have to take that, honestly. They actually are gaining on that trade, though. Let's see if we can manually do this. All right, so we manually do this. Denzel Good's not a great player, but we get the same picks in the first, but we move their third which I think was next year to a second this year. It was saying that we were getting about equal value, but it wasn't factoring in that that first round was a next year pick. I want to see if I can actually find a calculator that does that, if there's one that does that, because that is massive, right? Having to wait a whole year for a player and a draft pick that you don't know what it's going to be. Obviously, it's projecting to be late anyways, but you know they could win the Super Bowl. Who knows? And I will say for Madden's sake, I think that's a massively W trade, considering the fact that the Bills have been a little iffy at times in Sim because Madden is the way it is. So the trade calculator was saying we were going to give them 40 points of bonus for uh, a third this. So I decided to move it to a third next year, which probably makes it like 10 better for them or something like that. Fair trade, both sides. I don't know what they want, but I know what I want, and that is a DT. Who is this guy, though? God damn it, I hate this game. So many good players. Uh, do have a guard as well. Don't really need a guard, but he is a... No, he's not. I thought he was 6'6". I was about to say he's a monster, but he's not. So I guess there's really no choice. It's going to be Bayless, who is the best one there. There was another guy, but he was older. This guy looks really solid. Please be a god, and he is... Well, I don't know if he is. 76 overall hidden is already better than what we had last season. Very fast as well. Good pick. Good pick. Not even good pick. That's a great pick. Let's start giving ourselves the proper praise we deserve it's a very, very solid pick. And it's crazy to think that we actually need so many DTs, we can actually probably draft one like back-to-back. -back. Although, Andy Palmer here is looking pretty good. This guy could play... Uh, what is it called? He could play tackle if we needed him to. I don't want to draft back-to-back -back DTs because you do have this Gilbert Sheldon guy. Uh, I don't know. We'll, we'll see. Do we also... You know what? Screw it. We're going to risk it on Darren Hawthorne. Don't have him scouted, but that combine grade's insane. Please be good. And he is normal, which sucks, but they said that we were projected that we could have taken him number seven overall instead of trading down a bunch and landed a really good player. But instead, we drafted him, and I think he may even already be a starter over a freaking Arnett. Arnett's like, bruh, I'm star. I was your rookie. I'm, I deserve better. And he probably does, but who cares? No one asked. Another best available selection here, Stefan Watkins, not looking bad at all, and is a 75 overall hidden. Could replace someone in the future, or maybe uh, Clellan Farrell moves to DT. I believe he is actually 277 in real life. Who knows, he bulks up a little bit more, just saying. 285, that's not bad for a you know a rush DT. Especially when we have the, uh, the rookie, the 315 rookie, who's uh, kind of a block-shedding guru. Not really a guru, but you know. It's kind of what he's better at, I suppose. And I sold on the centers. We sold on those centers. Not that we took bad players by any means, but a little bit of a sell. We need a linebacker. Ahmad Brackett is that linebacker. Another hidden development traits player. 73 overall. Yeah, I mean, we're landing some hiddens. It's not really a surprise by any means. But at the same time, if I want a freaking tight end, I could just use Jay Cooper at tight end. So yeah, Jay Cooper, good, versatile player. And he's hidden... What does Excel? Excel is really solid. Agility is a little low, but once again, this guy, even though his run block sucks, could even play tight end if he needed to. This is a good draft class, believe it or not. Very good. Some would say, uh, you know, elite level uh, drafting. And it might be early, but I'm going to take him. I'm going to take him. Randy Hodges now. Oops. Do you not? Can you? Oh, it's not our pick. I was, I was going to try. I just hit X, but you can't. It's not our pick. I don't expect much here, but we're going to grab him anyways. 70 overall normal. And yeah, I mean, I don't expect much, but it's not bad. No, he could he could start year one if he has to. I'd probably rather take someone from free agency or move around players we currently have. A mid-fifth round pick now. O-line would be nice to take. Eddie Sawyer, 23. Don't know a thing about him. Mid-seventh. Probably early, but I'm going to take him. Trevor Jenkins, 68 overall normal. Not actually half bad. Could actually play center for us. I don't know if we have a center currently. I think we actually lost a few linemen this year. So not a bad pick. You know, you always have to take linemen, especially when you're this Raiders team. Take a look at the players we drafted. Of course, we can look at all their devs because all of them either will start or have no chance to start, a.k.a. the, uh, what is it called? The pass rusher. No chance to start. 
he may be in the rotation. Uh, Nelson Bayless. I would assume there were some other players. Let's take a look at the quarterback as well. Once again, it just wasn't a realistic pick. And there's people that I don't feel like on... Yo! An X Factor. I got to take a look at the other DTs. I thought he was going to be decent. I thought, at best, maybe Superstar. An X Factor and our biggest position of need is massive. As far as what we could do here, I would say Max Cross. We really shouldn't have drafted this guy. We have Crosby and Clellan, and they're both Superstar but I would say, technically, Crosby would be the one to be replaced before anyone. But yeah, that guy's probably just going to be trade bait in the future. I didn't even think about it. That They're both superstar. Uh, and then looking at this linebacker who's going to be our starting, I don't know which position, probably right out, gets star number 20. I hate these numbers. I know it's probably realistic to actually put some there because there are going to be a lot of people that do decide that, but I just, not my book. And I think that was our last hidden being Jake Cooper. Don't have a spot for him to start. He would be like number five right now, even if he's an X-Factor. And he is not an X-Factor. Number 10, not bad, but for a tall guy. Man, I hate these numbers. These numbers suck. That's a that's a grand draft. We've landed lots of starters. Once again, I would have liked to see an, a starting uh, offensive lineman from the draft, but here we are with what we've gotten, which is not bad. Do we have the roster for year two? Derek Carr, obviously, still the quarterback. Devontae Adams being reunited with Derek Carr. Once again, as a Packers fan, I am weeping, but it is what it is. Uh, as far as Waller goes, obviously, another really good player. So you have two X Factor gods. Rugs could join them. Jacobs was great. Should have probably went up in dev. Wait, actually, what was his season like statistically? I mean, that's really good, dude. Uh, it's hard because a lot of running backs do really well in sim nowadays, so I don't actually know if he did deserve dev. I don't think it matters, but you can make an argument that he should be superstar anyways in real life, so I'm just going to give it to him. If you're mad at me, be mad at me. Uh, O-line, I mean, we did improve it technically with Connor Williams, but a massive drop-off at the left guard position. Because Richie Incognito did obviously regress by five overalls. Brackets a massive upgrade because obviously he has a long-term future look at with us. Kwan's a straight-up upgrade. Cornerback is a downgrade. Hawthorne does have potential, though, with that young age. And the fact that he's a rookie probably gets a couple of chances at breakout. DT, worse, but long-term better already with just Bayless. And then obviously the edge, really, really good. And how can we actually get rid of Yannick? So we can't get rid of Yannick, and I was like, maybe Crosby should be the backup to him. But then I was like, you know what? He's a superstar, so no, he's not going to be backup to anyone. Uh, we may have sold because I don't know if he actually deserves X Factor. I also don't remember if it's 200 or 150, but what I'm going to do is revert his dev to superstar. All right, so speaking of Josh Jacobs, he wants a contract. Running backs being paid makes me sick to my stomach. A six-year $70 million with a decent guarantee is totally fair, in my opinion. It's a running back, easy to replace. It kind of depends on where he feels and where his agent feels he could go or how much he's valued. I think that's fair for a straight-up power back who's not that great at receiving. Trayvon Mullen, I think uh, six, about 10 mil per year is fair for an 83 overall star. 24, maybe should have gotten paid even more. Clellan is only getting seven mil per year. I mean, he didn't really hasn't played super well, but you know, ten mil per year over over five is I guess okay. Carr well at the C. Max Crosby, that's more like it. I think Farrell Nah, I think they're both worth pretty much the same, even though we're paying Crosby more, I think. Hunter Renfro uh, I don't know, dude. We're gonna have to look at the numbers. Well, I didn't know Jonathan Abram needed a contract, a five-year deal. He's failed many breakouts, but he's still my favorite little boy. I've raised him since he was just a little free safety. <laughs> it's not true. He had just 80 hit power when I found him, and now he had... I, actually, what is his hit power in fairness? It's got to be very high, right? Sheesh! All right, we might have a chance at the postseason. I'm not 100% sure, and we do. Nine and... Okay, well, here's the thing. Nine and eight, but we're facing the Chiefs, so will it matter? Who freaking knows? But not a bad start to this thing. Year two and in the postseason, the Raiders, I mean, 
I don't know where I'd place them. I mean, they're an okay looking team. I feel like they have a lot to fill, specifically on the O line and and some defensive pieces. But let's see, we lost to some really tough opponents. Of course, the Chiefs. That second one though, giving me hope. Winning, you know, three games against the same opponent in one year, not an easy task. Uh, let's take a look at the stats and awards. So Derek Carr, ooh. The thing is, I don't think I actually signed him or re-signed him, so we'll see. Devontae Adams obviously crushed it. Uh, Henry Ruggs, 841 with six touchdowns. Yeah, outside of Devontae and I guess kind of Ruggs, not really a good season. A lot of just passes to whoever. O-line, Leatherwood was rough. Colt Miller was okay. The rest were decent. Defensively, Quan Alexander had himself a hell of a year. Brackett had a decent year. A couple of guys with decent tackles. I don't know where the hell Kwiatkowski is, though. Bayless with nine and a half sacks. Not bad. Seven for Crosby and Farrell with only five picks. Nothing really special. Kicking McCann, not a bad year for his first year with us. The rookie, 50 yards per punt. Perfectly on the nose uh, per punt, obviously. Not bad. Yearly awards. I don't think we would have won anything other than maybe best AFC running back, if lucky. Oh, well, that too. Rookie of the year with Bayless. Uh, running back, number two for Jacobs. Obviously worth the money. And then Carr does move up to number five. Devonta Adams at number two. Best O-line, not a chance. And that was pretty much it. But it's still a postseason berth. We're going against the Chiefs, who are, once again, likely to beat us. But... <laughs> Gotta hope for the best, right? Like, who actually covers Tyreek and Travis Kelsey? Like, I, I don't know. We have good rushers, I suppose, even though they didn't really play like it. That's really your best bet, right, is get pressure on them, I, I guess. But anyways, going to the end of the game, we all kind of have an idea of how we may think this goes down, but it's not set in stone until it's over. Any given Sunday, a really good run for uh, a touchdown by Josh Jacobs to at least give us some points. But I got to be honest, it's not looking really good for us as we are getting absolutely torched 30-7. to And yeah, exactly what we thought was going to happen happens. We get smoked 100. Oh my God, I don't like this game when it does this. The Chiefs defense is not holding the Raiders to under 100 passing yards with Devontae Adams, Ruggs, and Waller. I'm sorry, it's just not... I mean, we didn't even run the ball much. I mean, we just didn't play offense this game? Like, what is this? I don't understand what's going on here. Of course, I expected us to lose, so I'm going to allow us to lose this way. If it was supposed to be a fair matchup, I would have restarted because that's just... Those sim numbers make no sense at all. Like, we just didn't pass or run? Like, well, what do we do? Just didn't play offense? Do we, we just punt the ball to them on first down for fun? Cowboys are in the Super Bowl, and they face the Chiefs. And, of course, no shocker to anyone, the Chiefs do win. Offensive dev-ups, we see none. We do see a drop in overall by uh, Derek Carr, though. Uh, Bayless, in one year, obviously, he was already superstar. Becomes an X... Oh, no, he was already an X Factor. What the hell am I thinking of? He was already an X Factor... Uh, and then a mod bracket goes to superstar with those being the only dev ups. I would have loved to see Hawthorne go up. Oh no, Quan also. I think his was only a one year deal, anyways. Maybe that allows us to keep him. I don't know. Let's see. He's looking okay. Maybe we'll think about it. But yeah, I don't know what to do with Derek Carr. Didn't really play well in the postseason. Iffy regular season. Devontae obviously came here, though, to play with Derek Carr. So. It kind of makes things awkward if we get rid of them after the first year they link up. Maybe you give them one more year. A one-year 20, I think, is easily fair. I'm willing to go a one-year 22, guaranteeing, like, the majority of the contract. Well, maybe not the majority. Um, I really want him back, but I just don't know what his value is because it says what the fair... One-year 25? A one-year 24. That better be enough, dude. Like, that's so much higher than what he's asking for. Watch. I enjoyed playing for you, but 41 mil tag. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to tag him, but I'm going to adjust the contract because in real life, Derek Carr obviously accepts that. What was it? Uh, 16 million guaranteed for one more year. I mean, Derek Carr after a season like that, who's just been clearly like average, isn't going to get much more in free agency. So clearly it just it's a fair contract. Richie Incognito at 40 wants to still play. If he's willing to play, I'll play, and I'll pay. Good play. Rhyming all day. Kenyon Drake, uh, there's no way. I'm sorry, okay, I'll, I'll stop. 
Kwiatkowski, we're going to let go. Hunt just too much money. Hunter Renfro hasn't done anything in two seasons for us. Quan Alexander, that's actually not bad money. I don't really want to replace the linebacker spot. If he wants to stay, I'll do it. Mm, thank you, dude. And I guess that's it. So Derek Carr is obviously happy with his one-year $24 million deal, which 16 of is guaranteed. He is just good enough to be the starting quarterback around here, in my opinion. Uh, we have a potential option. Oh, yeah, we have Cooper. We don't even need uh, Hunter, even though Cooper should be number two. Ruggs at number three. We're not going to deal with it. We need an offensive lineman, probably a center. Uh, looking at tackle. And Weatherwood is, I mean, he's developing. He's getting there, but... I mean, we could probably do better. So O-line, we'll be looking at. We'll monitor the situation. Same with quarterback. Uh, I think wide receiver was set on. Defense, though, linebacker is a disability. I, I don't know what that means here, but it's just not good. Uh, DT, linebacker, O-line is the focus. We could obviously upgrade some of the other positions. Safety just really hasn't upgraded the way I thought it would so far. But, I mean, we got more seasons under us, so let's just let it go. Are there anyone, oh man, Quentin Nelson, he's a fun option, but it just doesn't fit, right? Ooh, Matthew Inaitis would be a nice piece. DT, Hodges, obviously we seem to be getting a lot of pressure from our DT position. Having a guy like Ionitis with the young X Factor would be massive, and forget about it. He's being paid way too much. A lot of teams seem to be giving Levante David kind of like a one-year deal. I'd be willing to do that as well. I was going to give Quan a decent deal as well. And, I mean, if Levante is willing to pay, play on a one-year 10, which is completely fair to him, I have no objections. Has anyone ever signed, like, two legit linebackers? I mean, it's one-year deals. We don't have anyone else on the roster to sign anyways. So, like, I don't know. Jamel Dean's pretty decent, too. Arnett is someone you have to pay. I think we'll offer Jamel Dean a four-year deal worth nearly 40 because Arnett needs to be paid anyways, and he just clearly hasn't developed. At least Jamel Dean is a solid complimentary piece to Mullen. They're actually almost like pair-to-pair, -pair, like same player almost. Oh, that blows. We really don't get Jamel Dean. We offered him a pretty good deal, I thought. This guy was star. He's probably not going to be anything for us, but you know, not a bad little signing. But yeah, pretty much everyone was a backup. We don't get Levante or Treader. This is actual just, I don't even know. This is this is something. All right, so we have pick 17 and 19 in the draft. DT is the number one need. Well, so is linebacker, actually. Linebacker is the number one need. DT is the number two need. How many, how many linebackers do we have? We have a fifth round middle linebacker. Yeah, and I'm, I was going to go DT, and I feel like we're going to lose him at 18, but we need linebacker more. Isaiah Gardner. 73 overall, maybe a little bit of a reach because he is only a 73. He did get hit in, though, so I don't know. Seems okay. What is the next team? The Jaguars. I mean, just go on. Yes, Dugans is there. Now, I don't know how actually good he is, but Dugans being the only decent DT. Man, I don't know, actually. Maybe not. Maybe we don't go for him. Because look at these. Like, these guys aren't great either, but at least they have, like, you know, I mean, this guy doesn't even have block shedding up there. Don't get me wrong. There's a good chance he probably is a god. I don't want to risk it, though. I'd rather take a QB. We have a couple of QBs here. I don't know who the hell is better, though. There's actually three solid-looking QBs. I think we're going to wait. Nah, screw it. We're going to take that scrambler. We're going to take the scrambler. I don't know if Derek Carr is going to be here next season or not, but uh, Josh Mason could be the future of this. Oh, he's not a scrambler. He's the, okay, he's not a scrambler at all. Uh, but Josh Mason appears to be the future of this team. We're going to take him. Please be hidden. And th damn it, I was about to say, and thank you. But not bad. I mean, they basically just got a new Derek Carr. Ironically, we're in number four. Sweet. There was a lineman too, but even though he's likely going to be hidden, I just couldn't do it. So, I mean, this is kind of just a take a guess type of thing. But a fourth this year, a second round next year, and Damon Arnett for pick 23 from the Colts. I wanted to keep 19 because if I'm going to be training Damon Arnett, I kind of need a replacement corner. So I think that's what we're going to end up taking. And with this pick, Dugans is still there. We do have this insane looking corner, but we do have a third round corner, right? Danny Crisp, mid third, I think is worth taking. He's at least a solid number three, if not anything else. 
James Dugans were risking it, and we should not have 74 overall. Don't get me wrong, he is actually really, really solid, all things considered, but uh, normal devs are crushing my dreams. And we're going to risk it. We're going to take uh, 66 from the Falcons to add a third and a seventh next year. Obviously, we lost that second round pick, so two thirds, even if they're late, are worth it. Moving to two, could lose the corner, but I'm willing to take that risk because it's a number three corner. It's not number two anyways, so it is what it is. And please be there because I was just lying. I obviously want this guy a ton. Danny Crisp looks decent. Let's take him, see what we get. And we sold. Nice. Don't need a new running back, but man, that guy would be sick to have. Center, Stefan Pearman. No. Proctor. Oh, late fifth, though. Late fifth. I mean, we have a lot of good players here, so I'm just going to go to the start of the fifth, and if any of the players we want are there, we are making our trade up. Hopefully it's the center, even though he's 23. And, of course, he's gone. Literally, like, everyone that I even debatably wanted is literally out of here. Well, we're going to take it to DT with our fifth round pick. We're going to try to find that center because I think his name was Proctor, so it shouldn't be too tough. A little bit of an L, a little bit of one M, but, you know, here we are. Rick Amos or Amos, late second pick. Watch him be hidden. Okay, he's not. I would have loved it, though, because, uh, you know, I would have started him over the guy we did draft. Nah, I wouldn't have. I lie. He would have had to be superstar better to be worth it. Damn, really good draft last season. Not a, I mean, not great this season, especially with two first rounds, but nah, it was just bad. I was about to say it could have been worse. It, it really couldn't have been. We're trading everything else down. I'm sick of it. Yeah, we have been selling it a little bit because uh, two drafts, no solid linemen. That's eh, a little bit of a sell. Uh, as far as Isaiah Gardner goes, hidden development trade, the best part is those other quarterbacks that we miss are probably both going to be hidden. It's going to be fantastic. Isaiah Gardner, only star. What a bust of a draft. Yeah, our team took a very big drop in overall, without a doubt, and potential. So I don't know if this is the guard or not, which if it is hidden, seems to be the guy. Quarterback, Mr. Mike Callahan, normal dev, so we dodged a bullet there, technically. And then the 23-year-old, which mathematically just doesn't make a lot of sense to grab, was hidden. Uh, but obviously, you know... Youth potentials, our guy did look better, so I can't really say that we should have taken him. Also only star, so I think we were just kind of doomed in general. Proctor went 22, and of course he was as good as we thought. Star, superstar, X-Factor, it doesn't matter. It's, it's a sad, sad day for us no matter what. Especially since he went to the Buccaneers. Here's the lineup for year three O-line. I definitely wish we would have done something at least for the center spot. Connor Williams needs a contract. He's only a 78 overall. He's 26. I don't know what to think. If his blocking was more power style, which is for interior, I probably would keep him, but I don't know. Uh, as far as rugs, he really hasn't developed the way I've wanted him to, but he's 24. The contract shouldn't be that much, and he is super, super fast. Derek Carr, though, looking like it could be his last season here in Vegas. Looks good still, but that regression should probably be hitting hard. And, he, you know, in, in the past, like with guys like Matt Ryan and Stafford and stuff, we have changed the devs and overalls for guys that deserve it. But Derek Carr has been pretty average even year one. The, t the picks have been down, but, you know, the completion percentage hasn't been crazy. Yards have been pretty average, maybe even below average at this point. And touchdowns have been low. As far as defense... If we would have actually gotten Levante David at linebacker, who knows? But honestly, with the linebacker lacking, the DT lacking, cornerback lacking, I don't know if I see this team even making the postseason this year. All right, so Darren Waller wants a five-year deal worth some bit of money. Can we make it a four-year deal instead? And of course, he wants it all. Henry Ruggs, I don't really know how great he's going to be. I'll still do a five-year 45, though. Uh, Richie Incognito, he's got to be gone after this year. Connor Williams, O-line has been proven to be very hard for us to get. So I will just pay him the two-year 12, which is actually not bad money. And it doesn't seem like we really need to pay anyone else. Derek Carr could just straight up retire on us. Richie Incognito, once again, will retire. And then Waller will probably just <laughs> give him that five-year 63. Here we are, heads to the playoffs, and yeah, we did not do well at all. We went 5-12 and 12 with the Chiefs going 15-2. Let's take a look. Of course, Hunter McLeod, look at him. <laughs> we could have had him. We could have had him. 
Of course, was not the realistic move, though. Derek Carr is done in this town. Jacob's still looking like a god, better than ever. Uh, receivers were okay. Devontae looks like he's kind of regressing a bit. Alex Leatherwood's got to go, even though, did we pay him? I think he needs a contract next year. Bad timing for him. Watkins, who's actually only a backup, only played 380 snaps. Outplayed Cleland. I don't know what to do, but I suppose it came out to a good season, so I'm not mad with it. Uh, and then Gardner could go to uh, Superstar because he will be Rookie of the Year most likely. Let's take a look at those awards, speaking of. And he was, and that's pretty much it, unfortunately. Chiefs Super Bowl where they are facing off against the Cowboys again. And the Chiefs win again. See if we have any dev ups. See if Derek Carr is even still here. He could just straight up retire on us. He is now 78 over. Did he go up in overall? What the hell even happened? He barely lost ratings, but at the end of the day, he's just not worth keeping. He played really badly, and I think it's time for a new guy. Mason is likely that guy. We took him 19th overall. You probably give him a chance. However, we might have a top five pick. If there's someone that looks even better up there, maybe we pull the trigger. I don't know. Uh, as far as defensively goes, we get a dev up from Hawthorne, which is nice, and then a dev up from Trayvon Merrig, uh, which, yeah, you know, eh, it looks okay. Incognito's still here. I don't believe that's going to actually happen, though, so I'm just going to let him go. And, that, I mean, everyone else is gone. All right, it's free agency time. We have money. Well, we have cap room. Available funds are another story, but that's because of the stadium. Jonathan Taylor, J.K. Scott, Fletcher Cox, Tucker. There's some okay names here not necessarily the names we need though Fletcher Cox is an okay name but I suppose Dugans is good enough for now uh but Tunsil will obviously be a guy that we're just gonna offer the world to uh maybe give him like 90 90 thank you I will take that please take it please honestly do we just pay him more I mean he's not Orlando Brown level technically kind of because he's a little older but we have nothing to spend this money on. So if we don't grab somebody here, this is going to be a massive sell, simply put. So finally, an offseason kind of goes our way. We get Laramie Tunsil, which was, I mean, what, a five-year 90? I don't know what the math is on the top of my head, like 18 per, I'd imagine. Uh, Eric Kendricks, we finally get a veteran linebacker. Not quite as good as Bobby Wagner or what was the other guy? It was Bobby Wagner and... Levante David that's the one but still a really good piece for at least a year and then Andrew Norwell who I think was also a one year might have been a two year I don't know but our offensive line actually has some veterans speaking of so they can teach him a few things and obviously we don't have to draft as much that was one of the big issues we just haven't really focused on Alex Leatherwood has been consistently terrible in this one but still could be worth maybe a fourth round pick I mean he's a decent overall it's not easy to get linemen so might look to trade him for a fourth round pick. Like I said, we do still technically need linemen. So I don't know exactly what I want to what I want to do. Connor Williams. I mean, I think we need to pay him unless we already just did. Once again, I probably should try to finish these all in one go because then otherwise I just forget about everything. Let's actually take a look at his contract. So he has two years remain. Oh yeah, we just paid him. I remember that. So two year uh, twelve. Maybe we just keep Leatherwood, and if we have enough money, we... now we have Colton Miller over there. We just need to start him again. Yeah, we're going to trade Leatherwood off for, like, a third-round pick. He, he's worth a third round, I think, in, in Madden terms. I mean, in real-life terms, if he was playing that badly, he probably wouldn't even be in the league, but obviously this isn't real life. So, Eric Kendricks probably stays middle linebacker, since that's kind of where he's played. We'll put Gardner over at right out. Nah, we're going to put Kendricks at right out, because... This is this is the other guys' team. Kendrick is just here for the ride. And we do have, like, the third pick overall, fourth pick overall. Quarterback is going to be something we're going to pay attention to because, once again, we didn't start our quarterback, obviously. Mason isn't a bad player by any means, but nah, he actually is really good. Like I said, he is basically, basically Derek Carr here already. So 17 seems to be the magic number. <laughs> Not in real life, but in, in okay, relax in uh, in the game. Uh, but I'm looking to get two first round picks. So if any team has that, which I don't know if that will be the case, 
that is where we are going to be going because I really do want to get two players here. There's a wide receiver that looks really solid, and we need a replacement for Devontae Adams in the future here. Maybe not even in the future, maybe right now because Ruggs probably, once again, does fit as that number three a little bit better anyways. I honestly despise this company. <laughs> like, I can't even... I still can't even look at my right tackles because of this stupid game. Oh, my lord, dude. At least we got the trade, but, you know, I feel like we could have gotten more. It said here in the value chart that we were giving 1800 they were giving 2020 But once again, uh, it was a next year first-round pick. So what does that next year first-round pick mean? It could be better, could be worse. I'd say it was very close. Could have just done it straight up, but it is what it is. I mean, it's close enough. Let's go to 18 Please tell me that DT's there. Not that DT's that big of a need to where, like, oh, this is a huge loss if we miss him, but he looks pretty decent. He'd be worth grabbing, and he is, in fact, gone. So I suppose it doesn't matter as much to miss out on that first rounder. Uh, late first there, but this guy even... Oh, he's late second, though. Like, he fits the bill as a true number two, though, or number one, obviously, whereas Oscar Boston is really good, too. Early second, early second talent grade. Mathematically speaking, you want this guy because he has the late first talent grade, but I don't know. Uh, we should trade down a little bit more and then just trade up as soon as one of them goes, I guess. Which, ironically, you know, ironically enough, it'll probably be like right away. 24? That's this year, right? So that's not realistic in my opinion. Uh, opinion. I feel like the Bears are giving up too much, but in the grand scheme of rebuilds, we kind of got screwed over on our last trade, so it all equals out, I guess. And uh, we're seeing some good signs here. The wide receivers are all still there. Oh, thank you, game. I can't see now. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, our player's gone. <laughs> we're trading up with the Falcons. We'll give them, like, a, a fifth-round pick. I don't know if that's fair, but it seems fair, right? It's, like, literally one pick. We'll give them a good fifth-round pick on top of it. Is wide receiver a big need for this? Yeah, I mean, it's it, kind of. Yeah, we're giving them a 20 uh, increase in value. That seems fair to me. They're willing to take it, obviously. And the choice was out of our hands. The problem is the choice is the second guy on the list rather than the first. Who's this guy? Ah, 5'9". You can see why I didn't go for him. Of course, this guy's 23, so don't blame me. The three cone and the 20 yard shuttle obviously just blows, but the vert is insane. The 40 is insane for someone that's 6'4, and he's 21. Give us a hidden and we're balling. Okay, I mean, we're maybe not as balling as much as I thought. He is hidden, but he is only a 71 overall. So if he is only. Oh, he's a lot faster than I thought. Like the speed isn't crazy, but the excel's okay, and the agility's not even that bad. So for a 6'4, kind of a jump ball type guy. Not bad. The problem is, if he is only star, I don't think he's that good. I'll be honest with you. He's already wearing number 11, though, so maybe he is a god. We also do have two quarterbacks. This guy looks pretty decent, and then this guy looks pretty decent. We're going to go with the old whoever's last up is the guy we're going to grab. I would assume Bryce Portis, who has a cooler name anyways, is the better of the two. But once again, nah, screw it. Do we trade up? Let's trade up to the Jaguars because the Eagles might need a QB and I would assume the Buccaneers would. Like, I don't know if we actually need a quarterback because our guy, he looks okay, but at the end of the day, we've seen in real life that teams like the Cardinals are like, we'll go all the way to number one if we have to. Uh, I just went to the Cardinals just because I was thinking about them there. This one's a little under in value. We're given about 20 less, 25 less, which, I mean, if the Jaguars have no one there, it's, it could still be worth it. You know, we've given up value before. Bryce Portis is my guy. Let's take him. Please be hidden. Thank God he's hidden. He's the new number one. Super fast. New type of player around here in Las Vegas. And really good with a throw on the run. Really good with throw a break sack. Don't know what is, you know, if he's paranoid or whatnot, but... He's the new quarterback. We can trade off the quarterback we have for a decent pick, to be fair. I mean, he's a 77 overall normal, what, 22, 23 years old. Totally worth it for someone that needs a QB. So if there's someone that needs a QB in the... Well, there goes, there goes a couple of teams needing a QB right there. There's a team that needs a QB around here. Maybe the, the Lions will take a look at. Why not take a look? Let's see the Lions and the Panthers. Oh, we're going to the Colts, baby. 
They need some help. We'll let them keep their higher pick, too. We'll go to their this pick. So we trade Mason a fourth next year and a seventh this year for 38. I think that's probably pretty fair. Mason was, what, a late first, I think, or an early second, one of the two. Uh, and then with this pick, it may be a little high, but I think we might take that center. Oh, we do have a corner. Oh, I did not think about this corner. Mid-second. Corner is kind of on our needs list. Whatever, Deshaun Stephenson or Stevenson. Ugh! These damn corners have been so bad for me. I've been just selling on these picks 24-7, man. Damn, my center's gone. All right, Keenan Green is there. Looks like a pretty good value pick. Super, super fast. Outside of his broad jump, I mean, everything looks perfect. Late first talent grade, we're taking him, and he's normal. I'm sad. 77 jump, he was pretty decent, no? I mean, so far, I don't know what the quarterback's dev is, but so far, the draft has been kind of like, yeah, it's good. It could be better. It could be a lot worse. It, we'll take it kind of situation. We trade the remaining of our for, uh, draft picks this year and a six next year to the Giants to move up to five to take a tight end who could be the future of the position. Waller now has that long-term deal, but he is on the older side. You never know how long he'll last. Trent Gordon looks really fast. If he's not at least going to be the starter, should be a good complimentary piece. And another normal dev. Uh, a little bit slower than I would have thought. I thought a 4 five, nine would have been something in the like 86, 85-ish at lowest. Uh, so, I mean, I don't know how good the wide receiver is. I don't know how good the quarterback is. But if they're both star, this is technically an L. Especially since we had pick... Uh, wait, do we keep that? I think we kept the first round next year. So, in fairness, we do that to have that extra first run. Although, we are already in year four. Uh, Autry, I think, may be the number two out the gate. I'm trying to think. I don't want to look yet if he's not going to be. Oh, we don't have number 11 available, actually. Um, Let me think. So, we have Devontae... We already have a guy named Cooper. I think he's 24. Yeah, we're going to put this guy at number two right out the gate. And he is... Yes! Good call. What's his traits, actually? Ooh! Yeah, that's a good call. Uh, Bryce Portis, obviously, with star, will be the number one. Well, I mean, we traded off the other guys. So <laughs> it'd be pretty awkward if he wasn't the number one quarterback going in. We're going to put him at... No oh, wait a minute. Let's not do number two. Let's do number six. I don't like number six. I guess number one. And he's an X-Factor. Let's go. That's huge. That is massive. That's what she said. Let's actually take a look at the other quarterbacks. No way, dude. With the speed, though? Really? I mean, I would figure that they would give, like, the lower devs to the guys that look like gods. Tyson Cunningham, star. I mean, if there's a couple of other Axe Factor quarterbacks, this is like the best quarterback class ever because there was some really good ones. There was like five draftables near the first round. Joseph Wilkerson, superstar, also wearing number one. Congrats on also being uh, unreal. Ooh, Green Bay, uh, what are you doing? Uh, like I said, there's tons of quarterbacks here. Another normal, and it's the Cardinals. <laughs> uh, Dane Spencer. I don't know why. I guess we mentioned the Cardinals. Wait, the Cardinals? They don't have Murray? What the hell are they doing? Dane Spencer, superstar. So I'm glad we didn't trade to the Panthers. They actually drafted a guy. I looked at Darnold and I was like, oh, well, he's, you know, we could probably replace him. Uh, of course, that's Portis. I mean, look at the amount of quarterbacks here. Jake Strickland, normal. Thurman Monroe, normal. What was the other guy? I think he was a white dude. Yeah, this was the guy, David McDonald. Oh, thank God. Thank God we didn't win as fast. Like, that's what I would expect. You know, that kind of speed, you're expecting someone to be, you know, kind of normal, star, so then you have to develop them because they're already really good. But this guy, I mean, it's going to be kind of hard for us to, to beat that as far as dev and speed goes, right? This year, I don't I don't think it's going to happen. Obviously, in this rebuild, he's, he's the starter forever, and there goes my game. Like, how are, and he's 21. If he was 23 or 24, I could see it, but what's his, uh, like, paranoid thingy? Is he paranoid? Average sense of pressure, too. Aggressive. I don't know if any of the other traits matter. I think we've done a video like that before, but I don't actually know if they matter. Maybe we have to do another one like that. I mean, he's insane. He's absolutely nuts. I have seen better, but I have not drafted better. 
Oh, damn, our wide receivers are kind of lacking. <laughs> Normally, they give you, like, a bunch of practice squad guys. Where's our practice squad guys? Oh, yeah, Henry Ruggs has 11. So, oh, yeah, well, I mean, clearly, all tree can also wear the same number. I mean, we didn't really upgrade the team massively, but Tunsil is huge. You know, the left guard's huge. Kendricks helps. I mean, I'm not saying it could be our year, but we should at least make the postseason again. Man, our team is looking kind of like thin, and we do have like everyone's like, "Oh well, thank you, I've been working out." Uh, but yeah, we do have a decent, uh, decent bit of salary cap, so it's not like we're just broken. That's why we're just don't have any backups. We also might have to do something with Watkins. Maybe next season we trade him off for like a second round, like a decent second. Because once again, he's a pretty solid player. Oh, I should have checked out that DT that I missed. So once again, I've recorded this in multiple por parts. Oh, ports. <laughs> I don't know if this is season four. I think it is. The top of the left of the screen probably would have told me, but I didn't look. Uh, but season four, the team is looking okay, right? We have Waller, who's insane. Adams, who's insane. Jacobs, who's insane. Portis, who will be insane. Autry, who might be insane. And then Ruggs, who literally has 99 speed, maybe even 99 excel. And he does super fast, deep route. God Perfect player for us. Uh, and then looking at the defensive side of things, Merrick, not bad. Clellan Farrell and uh, Max Crosby, not bad. They haven't played super well, but they're not bad. Bayless is maybe the best defender we have. Mullins, all right. Hawthorne's on the come up. Abram, uh, I don't know. We might have to replace him. Brackett's insane. Gardner still has a lot of years left in him. And then Kendrick is not a bad one-year player. May even add a, another linebacker like him next season when he's gone. So we're in a good spot. The question is, have we done enough to get to the playoffs? And then have we done enough to maybe even surprise some teams and, and win some games? Maybe even go to the Super Bowl. So it's re-sign time. Trayvon Merrick wants nothing but less money. So I'm going to offer him a five-year, $40 million deal just because he's good. He's not necessarily great. I mean, he's obviously great for the future, but he's not at that level right now to be earning crazy safety money. He's a safety after all. If you, I mean, if you can tell that. <laughs> so Alec Engel, once again, run game is important to us. So give the almost maybe even the best fullback in the game at this point because I would imagine Kyle Juszczyk isn't a thing anymore. Patrick Ricard might not be a thing, and if he is, he's probably not in the 80s anymore. Probably is the best fullback in the like league right now at this point. And then once again, Kendricks, sorry, buddy. You could probably play another season, but you'd probably be like a 79 overall, so what's the point? We're also going to give Diablo a two-year four and a half. We had a pretty good look at a season here, and we do lose the last game, but it doesn't turn out to matter that much as we are 10-7, and 7, and obviously with our own division rival, easily nabbing the number one spot we get the sixth seed which is kind of surprising 10 and 7 i suppose isn't crazy good we face the jags probably better than facing the browns so the you know glad we got the six instead of the seven seed not bad not bad let's take a look at the matchups we had i think some of them were pretty decent actually let's take a look at the schedule and wow it's here to 35 against the Chiefs. so if we face the chiefs we are done for we are absolutely going to get sent away by the Chiefs, but it's fine. Ooh, Portis with the yards. Touchdowns, not as good, but still really good uh, season. Should be rookie of the year. Uh, Jacobs had a good year. The offense went ham. We almost had four 1,000-yard receivers. That is nuts. I must still be on KC. Uh, Colton Miller, okay, O-line played pretty poorly, but, you know, the numbers are there for overall. Bayless has been a god. Clellan with a nice season. Watkins and Crosby. Maybe we don't let Watkins go. We do kind of have uh, Clellan as the rush DT at times. I made him 277, like I said, which I believe is his weight in real life right now, uh, which is usable at DT. You know, if you're strong enough, you can make up for it. Uh, let's take a look at McCann. Not a great season from him. Don't know if that would have affected anything, though. As far as MVP goes, Camara gets it. How close is our guy, Portis? Really? Not on the list? That's a little surprising. Uh, but any other awards? Portis? Anywhere? Number six. Touchdowns matter that much. Of course, Offensive Rookie of the Year without a doubt. Quarterback, where was he? Number four. Fair enough, I guess. McCole Hardman on the Patriots. So Portis was kind of the only guy that really showed much on the awards list. I'd say Jacobs was probably pretty close, though, to be fair as well. Uh, we are, what overall are we? We're a 90 overall team. 
Going up against an 84 overall Jaguars team. I know they have Lawrence. We don't need to be reminded by it, but please just give us one win. I, I would be super happy even if we get destroyed next round. All right, going to the end of the game, please. All I ask for is one win. Of course, Jacksonville off to an insane start. 10 to 7 now. 10 to 7. 17 to 7. We get a touchdown. I'll take it. Start of the second half. Not looking bad. Up four. It's all a part of the process. Up 11. It's all a part of the process, baby. 42 to 17. 42 to 24. 42. Relax. Okay, relax. 42 to 31. And, of course, we take on and beat the Jacksonville Jaguars. Not the most impressive win ever, but we got the job done. We played a clean game. And, ultimately, we have won. Devontae Adams a chance at a ring here. McManus with a miss. I don't know if that would have affected him. I mean, it would have been a one-possession game. I don't know if that did matter, but probably not. Is that common? Two jumping? Like, jumping is something you can't necessarily get that good at, right? Like, that's something you just kind of, like, you spawn with, basically. Ooh, a speed upgrade for Autry, who apparently already has gotten one, right? I think he was 92 speed. Not bad. His jumping is high. Was it always that high? I thought it was, like, 86. All right, next week, and... <sighs> yeah, yep, yeah, here it is. <laughs> The Chiefs, let's talk about it, actually. It's, let's look at playoff rivals and hot opponent. Not looking at the other one. Don't worry about it. Hard-hitting prowl chess match. Obviously, a chess match. Why would you say hard-hitting? Defense on both teams will have plus five play rec. How, how would that be something I want? I should not have clicked that because we have the better defense. Right? Insult them. Yeah, let's insult the team that's on a hot streak. Makes sense. Chiefs are playing well, and all players will have plus 10 break tackle, play rec, and tackle for the game. The vote of confidence has your team fired up for this week. All players will have 10. Oh, I, I thought it was like 20 or something. Beat them to steal the momentum. I mean, sure. Uh, defensively, we are better. Offensively, we're not much worse. The teams are actually pretty well matched. Uh, the difference is we have a running type quarterback. They have uh, just a god that's it. That's all. That's that's his. That's arc. And that's his archetype. All right, going to the end of the game, seven to zero. Really good job by the defense to take the ball away. It looks like they did that multiple times there. Uh, ten to seven now. Fourteen to ten. Fourteen to thirteen. Twenty-one to thirteen. Defense, you just do your thing. Because offense sure as hell isn't. And up three with four minutes left. That's way to go to choke this game, boys. 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 Come on, dude. How are you going to choke this hard? Like, this isn't even like a, a graceful choke. This is just a straight-up sadness that has been placed upon me. All right, Devontae. It's not quite, quite the, uh, the OP play, but it's good enough. If that ball could just get down any sooner, please. And, I mean, I feel like you just go for it, right? There's not enough time to, to not do this. Ooh, Buck seen. Oh, we're not on the Chiefs playbook. We're in the Bucks playbook. That's right. It's going to be going to Devontae. Oh, Devontae's got it. And he's got room. Taylor Rapp is way too slow. The speed of Taylor Rapp does not exist. Oh, my. How is Ruggs not just torching this defense all day long? Of course, they will have a plenty of time to get the three points back. And they do not. Did they miss from, what was it, like a 45? I don't know. I don't care. Mahomes threw three picks. It's the only way you can beat the Chiefs is if Mahomes sucks. And that is exactly what happened. Who the hell is this? Steve Jacobs. Okay, cool, man. Uh, sack totals. Of course, we get outperformed in the sack totals by Kando. And Naughty. Sure, dude. That's, that's who would do it. Pick from Chris Barnes, the run stopper. All the DBs went off, though. We needed everyone to be on their best behavior. And outside of the quarterback, I can say that we probably did. Ooh, reveal a rookie's X-Factor potential. I think we've already done that with Bayless. But, you know, sure, Bryce Portis, too. So, yeah, we drafted two X-Factors in this. Oh, wait, no, Bora Bayless was a super... No, he was an X-Factor. I keep mistaking things. Uh, and we're playing the conference championship. Apparently, it's supposed to be another blizzard. It's the Browns. This is the toughest road, like, ever, dude. 
<laughs> Why is it so tough? We are a higher overall than them, but oh my. All right, going to the end of the game. 7 to 0, not a bad start. 7 to 3, 14 to 3. Come on, dude. Come on, Raiders. Not bad. Don't choke this one. You can choke in the Super Bowl. Today is not the day. 28 to 3. I mean, I don't think they have it in them. I don't think they have it in them. I don't think they do. 28 to 17. And we are victorious. Oh, my Lord. How? Oh, Portis, you got this defense actually kind of clutching up, though. Derek Autry, not bad. Not bad at all, boys. Not bad. If the thing is, even though the Browns are insane, beating the Chiefs there really, once again, even though Mahomes threw a lot of picks, it gave me so much confidence that I just, I, I'm, you know, I'm happy that it happened, but it was almost like, well, yeah, I mean, we just beat the Chiefs. We, I mean, if we don't beat them, that's really sad. Devontae, let's get him back to a 99 overall. How old is he? Like 31? 31. Still got some years left in him, probably. Still looks like a god. So if he doesn't, that'd be really shocking. And then Ruggs, really not good at anything but route running deep. And let's see if we can change that up a little bit. Short route, we'll take it. He's still pretty good. And here we are. Headed to the... What am I doing here? That's not what I wanted to do. Headed to the Super Bowl, baby. Super Bowl against the Panthers. It's always the Panthers. Why is it always the Panthers? Please. Uh, you've already won ring, so you're no stronger, no stranger to the magnitude and atmosphere around the Super Bowl. How much does that help? Significantly. 10 staff points. What would happen if I said the other thing? Savage, 20 staff points or something. <laughs> you imagine. Portis, strong arm, of course. His weakest link is his deep throwing accuracy. Also, gets an ability here. Fast break. Wow, these abilities suck. Well, let's take a look at the abilities because it could be the last time we see them. Actually, we'll probably look at the team afterwards regardless. And nothing on offense for DevOps. Defensively, Mullen goes to Superstar. That's, that's not bad, actually. 26 years old, Superstar, 87 overall. We're man coverage gods. Lock them down. Send them home. We're going to be champions. Come on, Raiders. Come on, Raiders. Let's do this. 90 there, 89 once again. You know, we had a little bit of a slow start, but we caught up. We're here. We're not going anywhere. Here we go. The Panthers versus the Raiders. A Super Bowl that I think we'd all be like, you know what? Okay, fair enough. Why not? Uh, something new. 7-0. Seven 7-all. Seven we're getting electrifying one so far. 14 to 7, 14 all, 21 to 14, 21 to 17. This has been a hell of a first half. Look at all the points. 31 to 17, not looking bad. Looking pretty good. I don't know if they can come back from it. Oh, that's a GG. The rate. Oh my God, we've doubled their score. 48 points. The Raiders are on top of the world. I did not. Expect us to just come out of nowhere there. I believe we went, what was it? Bad season, okay season, bad season, okay season that turned into a Super Bowl. I mean, it, I guess it was probably better than an okay season. We actually did pretty, pretty well. The receiving numbers were insane. The rushing numbers were insane. The offense was really good. And then in the postseason, the defense primarily carried, right? Like forcing interceptions from Baker, Mayfield, and Mahomes who just don't do bad in sim like ever. Not bad at all. The celebration is on. The Raiders are on top of the world. You gotta love it. Portis, a rookie X-Factor quarterback, wins it all. Probably still won't be in the title or thumbnail because Derek Carr and Devontae Adams, obviously that's kind of the, the story for a moment. I thought that was a floating hand above uh, number was 86's head. Not bad at all. Gotta love it. Did we force Darnold into picks? We did. Every game, it was like two or more interceptions, and that's why we won. Five touchdowns, I will say. Portis, this game was pretty damn sick. Uh, Holy McCaffrey was nice, too. To uh, Tommy Trimble was the number one receiver for catches, at least. Uh, Bayless with a good se um, game. Obviously, good season in general as well. Stephon Watkins. I am kind of glad we didn't trade him early because he was actually a pretty big part of this thing. He had a pretty good season or a couple of seasons as, quote-unquote, the backup just playing where uh, Cleland Farrell wasn't whenever he was the rush DT. So we didn't necessarily need two DTs because we already kind of had to.
But we did it, and we did it before five years. Surprisingly, I do kind of want to see what the overall, well, overall is of the league. <clears throat> Going to be a little bit higher than most leagues. I'd imagine our XP is a little higher. Uh, 85, 87, 85, 90, 81, 87, 90, 82, 85, 81, 83, 84. I mean, I guess that's actually not bad, right? Like, most of the good teams that started good are still pretty good, but they're not like overwhelmingly high as long as we're not seeing like every teams in the 90s that's a pretty good one right like the dolphins 83 giants 84 there's a lot of low overall teams and i would assume the round the morale is gone because of course we went into that one with an 80 what was i thought the cardinals were or the cardinals the carolina panthers were an 89 overall we were a 90 and uh they finished with an 87 so yeah not a bad season obviously not a bad rebuild at all a lot of fun players in this one Let's actually take a quick look at some of the players just to compare them to or have a chance to compare them to the the Raiders franchise we actually have now and see what they could turn into. So Josh Jacobs, really solid. 89 speed is definitely usable. Uh, you know, he's pretty damn good all around outside of spin move. Devontae Adams, not saying that the Raiders will get him in real life or in the game, but would be interesting to see, to say the least. Ruggs with an 88 overall never got past star development trade unfortunately but pretty good you know player obviously lacking a little bit around running catching isn't the most solid autry only had one chance in like one year to play and did a pretty damn good job with it looks pretty damn good already portis same deal 86 overall a really good quarterback outside of deep accuracy but when you know that's how you turn out after one year that's obviously a win waller at 32 is still a god Looking pretty good. I don't know if we had uh, regressions or not, anything like that, but looking really good. O-line, you know, whatever. Defensively, I suppose we'll take a look at Crosby and Clellan. 28 years old, Crosby. Decent, right? Decent. That speed is probably a lot higher than what he started with, I'd imagine. Uh, Farrell, also very, very good, obviously. Uh, Trayvon Mullen, 87 overall superstar. He's 27 now. Man coverage, press god. Trayvon Merrig turned out pretty damn good. Obviously, uh, Abram didn't do super well, but Trayvon is very solid. And then here is Abram, 28, only like an 83 overall, I believe. You know, kind of a raw, just hard-hitting god. And then Bayless, take a look. He's probably still only a block shedding. Like, how does this get you nine and a half sacks? So is it just overall that matters? I don't, I don't get it, dude. But regardless, that is going to be our Las Vegas Raiders realistic style rebuild. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, maybe leave a like and subscribe. It means a lot. It helps out a lot. Uh, if you guys uh, have a suggestion for what team you want to see next, let me know in the comment section below. If you guys have a, a rebuild challenge idea, an experiment, you want to see what matters more, uh, fullback pass blocking or fullback run blocking, whatever, give me a good idea for it. Obviously, that's not a good example, but you know what I mean. I'm trying to give you an example for an example yeah, I think we'll probably end up trying, like, do fullbacks actually matter in Madden 22, stuff like that in the near future if you guys are interested, uh, along with our normal franchise stuff, of course. And that is pretty much going to be it. Likely a stream tonight uh, on twitch.tv slash jumping here around 10 p.m. Central Standard Time. Maybe I'll slip that in the beginning as well so you don't forget. Uh, and hopefully I don't forget either. Maybe follow me on Twitter, Jump Care, second channel, PK, uh plays, and then twitch.tv slash jumpycare for the stream on Twitch. But that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching. Hope you guys come back for next video. But until next video, see ya. Oh, Jesus.